we got a lot to dive into right now with our Football at Four segment, Talking Football, John McMullen, right here on the Sports Bash Live on 97.3 ESPN. Johnny Mac, uh, hopefully you had a nice Memorial Day weekend. Uh, very nice. Relaxing. Uh, back at the grind today. OTAs. Oh, Would have been nice to ha- have the entire week off. Yes, uh, let, let's go with Jim Schwartz first because he's obviously the higher profile of the two. He has a lot more fingerprints on this team than does Mike Groh. And right out of the gates, Ruben Frank hits him with the uh, versatility in the secondary, guys who can play corner and safety. And he really has an interesting question about how much he's going to experiment with different combinations. And I thought that was interesting because, you know, I wonder if, like, the, the coaches view guys that are paired well together. Like, you know, hey – Mills and uh, Darby, they work well together. Or, you know, Sidney Jones and uh, Russell Douglas. They, like, I never really thought of it in that manner. Like, do coaches look at pairings and think that these guys' skills work well together? Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Normally, obviously, if you're the better player, you're, you're tend to going to work well no matter who you're out there with. Uh, but there is something to the fact that, uh, certain players communicate better with others, uh, and, and that could play into something, especially if you have a real tight competition uh, for a particular position. Uh, but I thought it was interesting because, you know, Jim will always say the off season is for teaching, uh, training camp is for evaluation, and then the regular season is obviously about preparation each week for your opponent. Uh, so you have the big 90-man roster, and even with Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby uh, and Rodney McLeod rehabbing, Malcolm Jenkins still not here, uh, even with all those guys out, you, you still have enough bodies where you don't have to play around a lot. And, and Jim kind of said that. Uh, in the off season, and then oh, they get to practice, and he flipped things. Avante Maddox was on the outside, uh, and Sidney Jones was playing the slot uh, with the first team, and it was the opposite last week uh, with uh, Sidney playing outside Avante Maddox in the slot. So it was a little bit interesting. Uh, I think that had more to do with. Avant Maddox and him kind of earning uh, a look outside. But ultimately, I, I think it's obvious by the first thing he looked at is the the preference, and that's Sidney Jones playing outside, Avante Maddox in the slot. And then when the, when the guys who are not healthy get back and, and they get mixed in, uh, hopefully – you have more depth and more guys that are capable of playing. Yeah, how much impact do these, you know, he mentions teaching. How much impact do these rounds of OTA have on your status entering training camp? Well, it, it's interesting, and, and both Jim Swartz and Mike Groh talked about this today, and, and Jim was pretty honest. At, there are different levels, obviously, of players, and – he mentioned specifically with Malcolm Jenkins, because Malcolm's not here, flat out admitted basically it doesn't matter for a player like that who's been around, who understands the defense, uh, doesn't necessarily need this kind of work. Obviously, it's more important for the younger players who haven't played a lot at the professional level uh, and need to learn technique and, and things of that nature. So. Different careers are at different stages, and it's different for everybody. But I've said it a lot on this show. If you're a good player in this league, you don't need OTA practices, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, no, and and I know, uh, and I'd say a lot is like, if you're a veteran, sure. But if you're a younger player who the team doesn't have a lot of information or tape or anything on, you know, and you can make an impression here. You may have gone into training camp as, say, a fifth or sixth uh, on the depth chart, and maybe they say, 
hey, this guy really, we want to see more of this guy. I mean, it could certainly help out these younger guys who they don't know definitively what your role might be. And I guess Sidney Jones, you know, you look at a guy like him, and they were asked about him. He said, you know, that he needed to get stronger, and he certainly asked about, uh, you know, competing against themselves as they try to get better. Where does he fit in physically and mentally? It seems that Jones, everybody is, is aware that this is a big year for him. Yeah, and I think Sydney is aware of that as well. Uh, I don't. I I think everyone understands uh, where he is and what was expected of him. And look, year one was a red shirt. I, I think he kind of throw that out. He barely played. Uh, was able to get back for that week seventeen game play a little bit. Uh, but the Eagles expected a lot more in his second year. Uh, and there was something to that. I mean, Sidney Jones admitted to us after last season that the Eagles told him he needs to get stronger. And, and Jim kind of provided some shade for him and said, well, everybody's got to get stronger. And everybody could can get stronger. Everybody can get in better shape. But in Sidney's case, it's really, really important. He wasn't able to hold up, especially in run support. And you go back to Sean Payton and that sort of embedded article that everyone talked about. In the first eight plays of the game, he wanted to go at Sidney Jones three consecutive times because he felt he couldn't hold up. And it turned out he was right. Uh, so he needs to get stronger. Uh, he needs to get better in that physical aspect, and he knows it, and the Eagles know it. Yeah, I know um, the, the whole secondary thing seems to be really the talk of the OTAs and the, in the camps because there's so many guys out there. But you also have uh, the uh, defensive front, and he was asked about that kind of out of the shoots too with uh, Chris Long and Michael Bennett not here anymore. That's over 15 sacks and 15 hits and a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. How does he? How did he explain uh, replacing that? Well, I, I think that was the sort of the headline. I wrote about that on on nine seven three ESPN dot com, and I, I think that's more of an outside thing. And what Jim was trying to explain today, and it's true, is that change is a part of this league. Uh, especially in the free agency era, everybody goes through it. There's 32 teams going through it. And it happens every year. Uh, it just happens this year. It's Michael Bennett. It's Chris Long. It's Jordan Hicks. Uh, there's always changeover. There's always going to be changeover. Uh, and it's his job to get the new group to produce and that's what it's about. But he also brought up his history and the fact that, yes, he's used defensive ends here uh, in the nickel pass rush, and he's moved them inside, whether it's Brandon Graham or Michael Bennett. But his history, he's always had a preference, whether it was Buffalo, uh, Detroit, or Tennessee, to have two really stout interior players who can rush the pass. Yeah. And that's what he thinks he has with adding Malik Jackson to Fletcher Cox. We'll see how it works out. But this is what Jim Schwartz wanted. He wanted Malik Jackson, and he wanted to have that true interior player to put next to Fletcher Cox. Yeah, uh, well, and Malik Jackson – um, is interesting, and he was he was another guy that um, uh, that was brought up today uh, with the addition of him, and then of course Vinny Curry. That you might not you need Brandon Grant for as many snaps, right? You don't have to play him down low, so he becomes really a, a, almost I don't want to say a uh, specialty type of player, but he's only going to be used it seems as an outside rushing end more so than when he got slid down a lot, and that maybe should help him. You know, you know, less plays be fresh. Well, I don't 
No, I, I think he's going to get similar numbers uh, as far as rep goes, reps go. Uh, I just think they're going to be a lot more weighted towards defensive end. Okay. Um, so if you look at the rotation as a whole and what Jim likes to do, it's to keep the best four guys fresh for the fourth quarter and for the final minutes of a game. So, I, I mean, he's going to want Brandon and Derek Barnett at defensive end and inside Fletcher Cox and Malik Jackson. How do you get to the fourth quarter and, and make sure their tanks are, are full or still have plenty left? That's the goal every week. Yeah. And that's where everybody else fits in, whether it's Vinny Curry, uh, whether it's Tim Jernigan, uh, or some of the younger, unproven players that we've talked about, Joe Osman, uh, Josh Sweat, Sharif Miller, outside, inside, Trevon Hester, uh, Hassan Ridgeway, who Jim brought up today. That's where they mix in. But I, I don't think you're going to see less reps from Brandon Graham. In fact, you might see a little bit more because he's in better shape at this stage because he's not – coming off surgery. Remember in the Super Bowl, he was playing with that foot injury. Then he hurt his hamstring. He had surgery. Uh, and he wasn't ready to go the entire offseason. Yeah. Now he's ready and, and ripping to go. So, if anything, I think you'd see an uptick in his playing time just at a different spot. Yeah. Now, you mentioned Barnett, and uh, he was, you know, Jim Schwartz was asked specifically about him, and we mentioned Sidney Jones, but Barnett was also brought in there about, you know, what kind of strides did he, did he put, like, some sort of, uh, you know, hope and, and want for Derek? I mean, obviously, they wanted to play great, and they wanted him to be an all-pro and yada, 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 but was there a realistic goal of uh, strides they want him to see for this season? Well, I, I don't think there's any goals. Uh, I do think they want him to be – the 14th overall pick in the draft. Uh, they want him to be an elite-level edge player. Um, and the question is, can he become that? I, I don't know. I, I've seen no real evidence uh, that he's going to be that type of player uh, to this point. I think he was certainly on his way to being a, a solid player. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if we look at it, and we look at the question marks of, of what this team has done in trading Michael Bennett and, and letting Chris Long retire, a lot of that has to do with getting Derek Barnett playing time. So if he doesn't play well, there's going to be some questions about what they did. If he does, everything's fine. And, and part of it, let's be honest, Mike, is pedigree. You want – your first round pick yeah. in any year to succeed. And the higher they are, the more opportunities they get. And that's what this is. This is another opportunity. Because let, let's face it, Michael Bennett is older, 33. Chris Long's 34. But last year, Michael Bennett was still a better player than Derek Barnett. Right. Yeah, no, no question. And you, you mentioned the – the spot where you drafted, uh, they also, you know, traded to get him. And anytime you have a guy that, um, you know, was that first round pick and you, you, he had the injury. So now you're like waiting. You, he missed a year. So you're, you never really felt the impact of a first round pick, it seems like, from Barnett. Because number one, he's had guys in front of him and then he ends up getting hurt. Now you're into season three and you still don't really know who this guy is. Well, I mean, look. I, he was essentially a starter as a rookie. I, I mean, Benny was, you know, he would often play two downs, but he was the starter in the nickel package, and and that's more important. Uh, and then he became the actual starter last year uh, before he got hurt. But we, we kind of talked about it at the beginning of last season, and when Michael Bennett was a little upset about his playing time, that was part of the reason why, because he's sitting there saying, well, I'm a better player. How come I'm not playing more? And that sorted itself out yeah. when, when Derek got hurt. 
But if Derek doesn't get hurt, who knows what happens? Uh, they want him to succeed, right. and they're giving him opportunities. And by the way, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. Every team does this with, with first-round picks. That's just the way this league works. John McBowen at JF McBowen. Um, Blake Countess, is he a guy that, you know, we talked a little bit about him, but uh, he's a guy who, you know, is thought of as a return guy. Is he in the mix for uh, getting on the field as like that, you know, in that uh, with the Sendejo and maybe being in competition there? Or do you look at him as strictly a special teams guy? No, I, I look at him as uh, mainly a special teams guy and, and not only a, a possible returner, kick returner, but coverage guy. Today he lined up as the personal uh, protector in, in punt formation. Uh, so he's a good special teams player. I, I look at him like Clayton Thorson, and Clayton's going to be the third quarterback, but Nate Sudfeld is trying to hold off Cody Kessler to be the second quarterback. Uh, the loser of that battle is not going to make this football team. Uh, sim similar to safety, Blake Count is, is going to be the fourth safety. Uh, and the, Andrew Sandejo is going to have to hold off the Trey Sullivans of the world for that third safety spot. And whoever loses Trey Sullivan or Andrew Sandejo, they're not going to make the football team. Blake is going to be the fourth safety. Uh, let's switch over to some offense real quick. And I guess let's start with Carson Wentz. It was uh, tweeted out by Lewis Riddick over the weekend, and everybody went crazy that, hey, uh, he's going to be your NFL MVP <laughs> this year. Now, I guess because he had mentioned that Pat Mahomes was the guy to watch last year, and he obviously hit on that, that now people should get excited. But this isn't like earth-shattering news. Wentz was very good in 17. He wasn't as good in 18. He wasn't lousy last year, uh, but he just wasn't the same guy. Uh, but uh, working with Deshaun Jackson and, and the group that he has now, is there a definitive look to Wentz as a more, more more mature guy from the guy that he was two years ago that was an MVP favorite? Well, I, I don't know if he's more mature. I think we'll see that as the process goes and I, on. When I talk about mature, I, John, I, I'm not talking about him as an immature guy. I'm just talking about just knowing the game, like being an NFL, more of an NFL pro and having that look of, hey, yeah, I've I been mean, here, you know? Every time you get more experience, it's better. Uh, and, you know, last week when he talked about us, he talked about uh, the nutrition aspect. So he seems to be learning uh, from his body standpoint that he's got to keep himself in better condition. So all of that comes with experience. Um, and then you put the talent and the fact that he's healthy. I, I mean, to me, that's the biggest part. He's healthy. And he's got an off season, and he's working with the players that are here. Uh, and he hasn't, he wasn't able to do that last year. And I think that explains uh, the step back more than anything else, uh, along with the fact that you need the full 12 months to feel comfortable on a torn ACL and LCL. So that's in the rearview mirror. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, I, I'm kind of amazed how many people got so excited not anything against lewis reddick but look carson was going to be the mvp when he got hurt he was going to be the mvp of this league so it's no surprise if he's healthy he's an mvp level player that to me is the more important part if he's healthy if he's able to play 16 games with this offense with this coaching staff he should be in the conversation and that's – everybody has said that for a long time, I think. Yeah. No, and I think everybody should expect a much better Carson Wentz for you. the reason you mentioned. Uh, being a full year plus now past that injury where a lot of guys come back from that injury, they're just not the same guy. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him out there this year with this group of guys, including Deshaun Jackson. It looked like he was back there returning punts and, you know, just being a part of this offense and giving Deshaun, you know, uh, Deshaun, giving Wentz, you know, 
elements of an offense he just hasn't had is that I mean Torrey Smith was a deep guy, but not in the Deshaun Jackson mold. Plus you have nah. Zach Ertz and you know adding uh, all of these weapons. It just seems that Wentz is just set up to have just a special type of year. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, if you look at the playmakers on this team, we've talked about a lot. Uh, it's really impressive on paper. And today it was Zach Ertz. I mean, it was just you, you can see the the connection those two have together. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, and then you add in the true deep threat. Yeah. I mean, Torrey Smith could run. But Deshaun Jackson is one of the greatest deep threats in the history of this game. Right. And and, and then you have uh, the trickle-down effect. Nelson Aguilar goes back to the position he's most comfortable with. Uh, and Dallas Goddard, as I said, the only reason he's not a top-10 tight end in this league is because he's behind Zach Ertz. Uh, and-, and now you have running backs – the first time. I mean, Jack Jahi, you could sort of weigh, and when he was healthy, he was okay. Uh, and I'm I'm not saying Jordan Howard and, and Miles Sanders, who still hasn't been able to practice, are going to be stars, but they're better than what the Eagles had. Yeah. So this is by far the best skill position group uh, Carson has had. Yep. Uh, any reason why Miles Sanders not participating? Uh, We don't know. Obviously, he's hurt at some point. The Eagles don't have to give out injury information at this time of the year. Um, Miles has not been in the locker room, so we haven't been able to ask him directly. However, he's been on the field watching practice. And if it was anything serious, uh, he wouldn't be on the field. So I I don't think it's it's serious uh, by any stretch. Uh, he's John McMullen, football at four, every day, Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN, and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app. All right, John, uh, tomorrow OTAs continue. We'll have more uh, on the Philadelphia Eagles. This, uh, hey, 100 days to kick off of the NFL season. Thanks, pal. All right, thanks, uh, NFL season, of course, is here. 100 days from now, we'll have the NFL kickoff, Green Bay and the Bears.